I am a huge proponent of simplifying the way you capture information and get it into Notion because you can have the most beautiful workspace ever and I love that we are focused on visually aesthetic spaces. I did a whole video about that. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check that out. But we wanna make our digital spaces beautiful but if they're really difficult to maintain or get things that are like outside the space into Notion, then there's a lot more friction involved. You might be tempted to ditch Notion altogether, move to the next shiny productivity tool. And I really think Notion has the capability of keeping your life organized and on track for the long term. So I don't want you to give up on it. Now, the next best thing that we can do that we've already done before is create a quick capture page. You've probably built one with me already. I'll leave a link to that video down below as well. But what this is, is a page full of buttons that are connected to different databases in your workspace so that you can easily get stuff out of your brain and into Notion. What it does not do though is get stuff that you have saved from the web into Notion necessarily. And we actually have a better tool that is more capable of doing that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. Welcome to my channel in this little corner of the internet where we talk about habits and routines and planning and personal growth topics. And of course we get really nerdy about Notion. So if you love all of that, I would love to have you join me here and subscribe to the channel. The tool I'm going to be sharing with you today is called Save to Notion. It is a Chrome browser extension and it is going to help you get stuff from the web into your Notion workspace. And it's really, really cool because it has a lot of different templates that you can set up. You can set default properties. So you don't even have to like waste a lot of time choosing different properties that you want to add. Now Notion does have its own web clipper. And I want to mention that because Save to Notion is not technically affiliated with Notion at all. But the Notion web clipper hasn't been developed or added to in a few years and it has basically very simplistic capabilities. So what you can do is you can save a URL, you can save the page content, and you can save it to a different part of your workspace or a specific page. What Save to Notion does though is it allows you to apply templates to what you want to save. And I'm going to show you exactly how I use it and the different templates that I have set up to make it super, super easy to get the things that are most important for me to save into my Notion workspace. There is one drawback to Save to Notion, and that is it is not currently available as a mobile app. It is just a Chrome browser extension, so you're gonna be able to use it when it's on your desktop. If you're on your mobile device and you find a web page that you want to share, you can use the quick capture page that we have set up together, or you can use the little share icon and choose Notion to save it into the Notion app. Again, it's going to be very simple to save in the URL, the content of the page, and where you want to save it to. You can see the Save to Notion extension up here on the top right, and when I click on it, five different forms or template options pop up for me. Now, I am just on the free plan of Save to Notion, and because of that, I only have up to five forms. That's typically all that I think I really need. These are the things that I'm most likely to save, but if you wanted unlimited forms, if you had a lot of different various items that you wanted to save, and they were vastly different from each other, then you could upgrade to the premium version to, again, get those unlimited forms. But the first form that I have set up is called my learning library. So this is connected to a database where I'm saving articles, videos, podcasts, etc. Typically, when I am on the web, I'm saving an article to read or one that I've already read but want to save and reference for later. This is one written by Laura Tremaine on her Substack, and it was actually really interesting about the concept of ideas. Are there any original ideas? Can you steal ideas from someone else or maybe build upon it? It was just fascinating to read as a content creator. I've already read it, but I do want to save it. So I'm going to click learning library and it's already going to pull the title for me. It's going to automatically put the status as to process. And I have a few different statuses here that I could change it to, to listen, to read, to watch, or to process. I've already read this, so I don't need to do to read. If it was sticking with to process, the only reason why I have that in there, just added context of information, is when I get to my end of week planning routine, which I've done a whole video about that, if you wanna check that out, I have a section there where, it's, where it says process the things that you have saved. So if I didn't wanna spend a lot of time organizing this, I could just click that to process status, it will pop up in a linked view of a database on my weekly planning routine page, and I can do it then. But since I've already read this, and I'm gonna process it now, I'm just gonna put it in my 
my archive. So it's in my learning library archive. That's where I can find it. The medium is already done set to an article because I said that most of the time I am saving an article. I do need to choose the topic though. So let's go with content creation. I think that fits. It's grabbed the URL. It's grabbed the icon. It's also grabbed a content image, which I can say if I want that or not. And it's also pulling the context of the entire page, which is the article that I want to save. So let's click save page. And right now it's saving it to Notion. I'm going to go into Notion and pull up my learning library and we saved it to my content creation topic. So let's open that up and there it is. It's showing an article that I saved. Let's open that up and you can see that it has grabbed, well, it's grabbed a couple different, <laughs> two of the same ones. Sometimes that doesn't work correctly, but it does have the main text, which is what I really want to be able to reference. Now the next template that I have is going to be my bookshelf. So let's actually pop over to Goodreads. This is the book that I want to read next. I'm going to click that open again, click save to my bookshelf. It's grabbed the title. I also have this set to grabbing the cover of the book as the cover of the page because as you'll see when we go into Notion, it'll look really nice that way. Uh, currently reading because yes, I am going to be reading this one. It's applying my new book template. I think I have this author in here. So let's just actually search for her. Yep, Holly Black. So we will apply the author. The genre is going to be a fantasy. And then I just going down here and saying, okay, it was published in 2019. I'm reading this on my Kindle and I believe it came through the public library. So let's actually get rid of Kindle Unlimited, choose public library and the page count is 336 and it automatically has the day that I'm starting it as today because I'm probably going to start it tonight. Has my reading year in there and the rating is empty because I will do that after I read the book. So let's save that page and see what it looks like in Notion. We'll go into my reading hub and you can see that it has already populated under my currently reading section. You can see that cover is really nice and the inside it has all the properties that I previously determined. The next item that I am going to save into my Notion workspace are things for my swipe file. If you've never heard of a swipe file before, this is is basically just a file, a digital file of inspiration. So these are things that I'm saving not to copy other creators, kind of like referencing that article that I talked about before, but more for inspiration. Sometimes just looking at what other people have done can really jumpstart your own creativity and you can go in a little bit different direction, but you're also still influenced by them. So I have some thumbnail ideas here that I'm like, oh, I love how that is. How can I apply this from one niche to the other? Some email that I think are really well written or maybe I can kind of you know do a similar structure to the email. There's sales pages that I have kept and snipped that I loved because in some way maybe it didn't feel like a sales page or I just felt like it was really well laid out. So things that I just want to save to inspire me when I'm just feeling like I need to get over that creative hump or I'm having a creative block. So I'm going to go into this email here. It's a welcome email from Danielle of Less Hustle More Joy. We can totally get behind that and I'm going to save it, click my save to Notion icon, click swipe file, and it's already grabbing the title for me here. I do not need my email added to it. And it also has the content of the email here. And then I can apply a different template. So these are Notion templates that are coming up. And I'm gonna say this is a new email and I'm gonna apply the category welcome email because that is what it is. So let's save the page and see how it looks inside Notion. So when I bring up my emails, you can see here it's right at the top and it also has snipped that email for me. It keeps a lot of the formatting, which I love so I can see how it's written out. And so when I actually get my act together and create a welcome email, I have some inspiration to go off of. Been online for I don't know how many years and I still don't have a welcome email, but that's besides the point. The next item is actual emails. And this is kind of similar to what I already did because I did actually go and save an email, but this is mainly for my assistant who helps me manage the emails because this is just really overwhelming here what I'm looking at and so she'll go through this and decide what emails I actually need to look at. I filmed a video that I'll leave a link to below about my email management system, how I have my labels, how I work with an assistant if you're looking to hire out and want some tips. So you can go watch that but basically she is going to find an email that she has a question about that she needs to ask me about. There's an email here from my 
the kind of tech support slash friend Gretchen. So let's say she's doing this one and she's gonna click this little save to Notion icon. She's got it set up on her browser. She's gonna click emails and this is what it's going to do. The kind of same thing as when I grabbed it from my swipe file and she can also assign it to me right here. So sign me, it already is grabbing the email date. It's already applying the template add new email and then she can say, is this a high priority or low priority? So let's select high, save the page and go into Notion into my email management page and here at the bottom, and I'm also gonna get a notification for this as well in my inbox, but you can see it's got the email date, it has the topic, high priority, and it's assigned to me. And then I can tell, I can open the email. I don't even have to go into my email, which is so great, but if I need to, I can click the Gmail link, but it's already sniffed the email for me that I can read. And so I can tell her that I'm gonna respond to it, or I can say, here's how I would respond, or here's what you can tell them. And I can click this button, it will move it back to my assistant. And you can see here, I'm also notified with it as well. So that's how the email management works out. Again, check out my email management system video for more on how we work together on that because I have some guidelines set up and things you might be interested in checking out. Okay, last one, our recipes. That is what I love saving into my meal planner, our recipes. Now there are some caveats with this in terms of getting the entire recipe into Notion. So we're gonna talk over that, but let's say I wanna save these ridiculously good chicken tacos with green sauce. These look so good. It's almost lunchtime as I'm filming this. And so I really would just love to drop everything and make these <laughs> right now. But because typically Save to Notion is going to capture all this information, we don't need this. We don't need all the steps. We just want this section right here. Here's my little hack. Click the print icon so that you just have the printable version of it that we can then use the Save to Notion capture on that. It's gonna capture a lot less of the bulk of the information of the blog post and just get you that recipe, the ingredients and instructions. While I'm on this page, I'm gonna click Save to Notion and click Recipes. It's grabbing the title. And right now it says empty, but I actually want to grab the web page. Now you can play with this because they do have a select on page version. So if you wanted to, you could kind of like try to do all of this and confirm the selection. I actually find it's really, really wonky. So that's why I just don't use it because I can never grab the specific information. So let's just grab the web page for now. We can delete the stuff we don't need later. This is a main dish. So I'm gonna apply the new main dish template and it's automatically going to check for me new recipe because I have not tried this recipe before. Recipe link is the last thing it's gonna grab. Save page. Let's pop over to Notion and my meal planner. And let's go into my to try recipe section and it should be here where the chicken tacos right here. I can open that up. Let's open this as a full page. So you can see it grabbed the picture for me, which I love. And it already added the lunch and dinner course because I had that applied to my template, my actual notion template where it said, make this a main dish, new recipe is checked. And down here is where it's got all the instructions and ingredients. I can just get rid of this section here and then voila, there it is. Now we've made it to the part of the video where I'm gonna show you how to set up a form on Save to Notion. Now quick caveat, I am not uninstalled my Save to Notion extension and reinstalled it because I really don't wanna get rid of all the forms that I have done. I did delete the My Bookshelf form so we can do that one together. But know that when you install this, you will need to connect it to your Notion workspace so that it knows which databases to search for and grab. But let's go through add new form together and get that bookshelf back into here so I can start saving new books again. So I'm going to search for bookshelf from my yeah, Notion database that is connected to select that. And it's already trying to match the different fields from Notion to the Save to Notion extension. So the title is correct. It's going to grab this page title. The content image though is not correct because I would like to pick another field and say that I want this to be the cover because remember back in my Notion workspace, we had those pretty covers 
borders there. And so that's what I want to select for the main image on the page, which will be the book cover. The content I do not need to grab, that is going to be empty. So let's actually hide that field. I do want to apply my book template, my new book template. So let's add that. And then let's go ahead and add some of the different fields because it only grabbed just a few of them. So let's see what we haven't added yet. The icon we don't need because my new book template is going to add that book icon already. The next thing I probably want to have is my reading year. I want to be, to be able to select that, but because it's 2025 as I'm filming this, let's just go ahead and link that page so it comes up automatically. And then at the end of the year, I'll just have to go back and change the template and link 2026. The source I definitely want to be in there. I want, let's see, the year published. Yes, I wanna be able to add that. And so I'm just gonna go through and add the different things that I would like to add to this form. Okay, I think I've got pretty much every field that I would like to add here. I'm going to rearrange them based on how I would like them to show up. So I'm gonna do the author under the template. Let's move, yeah, the genre under that. We've got the source, the format. Format's typically going to be Kindle, so I'm actually gonna apply that automatically as a default status. Yes, let's actually do that right under template and automatically put the status as currently reading and then we've got the start and finish date now what it is doing is it's already applying a date that it's found on the page the publication date to my started and finished date and I don't want to do that so let's exit out of those but I can say started date let's do now so that typically when I'm saving a book that I'm currently reading it's just gonna grab today's date you saw that in the example that we did together so I'm gonna do save and go back let's pull this up on under learning library and go into it. And you can see that when I'm saving this page, it's got the title, the cover, the new template, and my defaults that I already have set here. And then I can just go in and type in the information that I need to fill out. Using Save to Notion makes it so much easier to bulk capture information and get it into your workspace without a whole lot of manual extra work. And if you've been feeling like Notion hasn't fit as seamlessly into your life as you thought it would, try this web clipper because I really think it's going to be a game changer. Now, I would love to know in the comments, what is the number one thing that you would love to use this web clipper for? What do you wanna save into Notion? How do you think it's gonna make your workflow a little bit easier and more enjoyable? And if you haven't built a quick capture page with me yet, I'll link this video so you can watch that next. We are going to build it step by step together, the buttons, connect it to our databases. And like I said before, this is great to get all the information that's in your brain when you're on the go into your Notion workspace.